A world without cinemas will mean significant changes to how people experience and consume movies. Will fundamentally change the landscape of movie consumption, affecting not only how films are watched, but also the broader cultural, economic and social aspects tied to the cinematic experience. Imaginemos un universo donde hipotéticamente hablando, un simple cambio ha generado un efecto mariposa, donde las posibilidades son infinitas, donde un mundo muy parecido pero a la vez muy distinto se ha desarrollado y las cosas no son como las conocemos. Vayamos ahí, a ese multiverso. Today we have a special guest, okay? Mr. Ross Katz. Okay? He's a Hollywood director. And Ruben, okay? it's a special guest that we're going to aid you to talk about this the theme. Okay? So today, in hypothetical speaking, we're talking about what if cinemas disappear. Okay? Uh, welcome, Ross. Okay? So the first question I, I want to ask okay, is, did you think that eventually cinemas can disappear, okay? will disappear? Uh, can I just say first, it is a real honor to mm -hmm. be here Hi there. Uh, broadcasting with you in the Yucatan. Mm -hmm. What a great thing for me. The next time I do this, it will be in Spanish because I'm a guest here <laughs> and I am going to be immersing myself in Spanish. Um, thank you for having me. I also correct you, I don't consider, I, I'm, I'm certainly not a Hollywood director, I'm, I'm, uh, I would say a guy who makes movies. Um, uh, I write movies. Uh, uh, sometimes produce, uh, mo mostly produce, sometimes write, sometimes direct, sometimes uh, whatever it takes. Um, it's a great question. What happens if cinemas disappear? It's a dialogue that is already starting uh, because the uh, cinemas have been crushed uh, uh, by uh, a variety of factors. Uh, beginning with COVID, adding streaming, and all of those things that we know about. I think there's an enormous reason for optimism. Here's why. People have always found a way to tell stories. So when they've been told no, they found another way. There is a, a, a film I was involved with that involved taking trucks into India throughout the desert and putting up giant sails from boats as movie screens to create cinema. People want to be together. People want to experience it. Remember the first time you saw a movie with someone else and you laughed with them or you cheered with them? It's different than of course, you know, the technology is going to keep changing. I think about when, what was it like the day that all of these incredible newspaper journalists lost their jobs? Because what are newspapers? Why do you go pick up a piece of newspaper? A lot of people lost their jobs. But people find ways to tell stories. It's, it's how we learn to know each other and I personally think we have to fight, fight, fight not just for big movies but for people to find ways to create cinema, go to the cinema and make filmmaking a communal experience. So also um, you, you experienced the COVID problem and all the cinemas that were closed in the US and the rest of the world, okay? And how does that uh, affect to the local economies? For example, Los Angeles is principally, uh, the, the movie industry is so, uh, so big there, okay? So how did you feel the experience that uh, to watch everything closed, okay? And all the local economies that crash. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very sad. Um, uh, there, it, look, when businesses started closing, 
it changed everybody's life. Cinemas that have made a, a difference in my life, to see them close. I mean, there are certain films that made me want to make films. And I remember getting the ticket, and I remember going into that theater on that day, and to see it close is sad. Theaters are closing all over the U.S. Um, and uh, some of the greatest theaters, you know, in, in New York, um, the, the greatest movie theaters the, the, where historic moments have happened of premiering films that change the world are closed. Uh, it's something that we're all dealing with um, and it's, it's very, very difficult. It is, um, it's happening now, right now. And it's continuing to happen. But as I say, I, we have to be optimistic and we have to fight. We have to find financial models that make sense to get people to, to want to be together and watch a movie. That doesn't mean I, I'm not anti-streaming. I think there's so many things that I want to watch personally. But there's a place for the cinema, and I don't, personally, movie theaters are never going to disappear. Okay. It's going to be a big climb, but we're going to get back. Okay. So, also, uh, it's cheaper to produce for streaming over Hollywood, okay? Because, uh, you know, if you're going to invest money, okay, and if you see that you can maybe have better results spending less money doing movies for streaming okay maybe all the producers go for for that side okay in your experience is, is cheaper is the same okay I am going to I'm going to strongly tell you in my opinion it is not cheaper to produce or make films for streaming versus the cinema and and and, and again I um, I am not in any way against streaming. Again, there's different things that I want to see in different ways. Um, but some of the things that you're watching on your phone cost $300 million. They didn't cost less because they're streaming. Um, yes, uh, there are different kinds of marketing expenses that I'm not an expert in when it comes to an actual movie theater. Um, but the reality is that to make a story that is cinematic, uh, in, in my view, uh, it is not less expensive uh, streaming-wise. And in fact, you will find some of your favorite things uh, that, are, that are streaming cost so much more than a film you may have seen in the cinema. And as a writer, uh, the economic uh, balance is better for you uh, in a stream because when uh, one year ago that uh, all uh, the guyanists and the actors go to the to the what's this? La la huelga. Se fueron la huelga. Okay. When they go uh, and the strike, strike, to strike, and because there, there's a problem that they were fighting that they're not earning the same money, okay, that they earn in, in, in cinemas that right now that they, all the movies were on on, on a streaming, okay. It's 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 how, it's what about the, the about that thing, okay? It's, it's true. Um, I think that um, there's there's a lot of things. Um, it, it's the the way that people were paid and are paid. Um, uh, streaming was being treated as an experimental, as a new technology, but it's not new anymore. <laughs> and I think what the fight, in my view, uh, for, for any, anyone working on as a, as a writer, as a director, as a producer, as an actor, is just to say, recognize my work. Recognize that um, maybe 
100,000 people went to a cinema and saw this, but what if 100,000 people watched it on their tablet? That's, I still did the same amount of work. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a very, I'm, it's kind of basic way to say, but uh, economically, uh, the film industry is in great despair. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, uh, it, it is, a, uh, it's a seismic shift. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the industry is going through, um, especially if you make independent films, but really any films, uh, any kind of uh, thing that you're, you, any kind of art or, or work that you're doing, um, uh, people are struggling. And suffering, um, it's it's it, it requires a massive mental mind shift. Um, you know, people who have had careers their whole lives are out of work for long periods of time because of a, a variety of reasons. There are less things being made. Things are being made with less people. Um, less writers, less crew, um, there's a variety of factors and I think every single person in the film industry, Hollywood, independent, whatever you want to call it, is having to adjust to the fact that, um, you know, this is a painful, painful change. Um, but to add that button of, of optimism, um, people always find a way to tell stories. Writers will always write, and it's now going to be a question of how do they think of their career? How do we consider making a living and being able to survive and continuing to do the thing that we love? Teleplay. La señal de entretenimiento, cultura, espectáculos, noticias y más. Emitiendo desde Mérida, Yucatán. Disponible en teleplay.tv. Servicio de Roku y aplicación gratuita para Apple y Android. Ahora también presente en las ciudades de Tizimín y Valladolid a través de sistema de cable. En Quintana Roo, la señal de teleplay está disponible en Cozumel a través de cable de Cozumel. Y en Playa del Carmen, a través de cable Riviera Maya. Esto es Teleplay. So also, um, there's a new player in in the cinema in the cinema game that is the AI. Okay, mm. okay. Um, what's the role of the AI? Because I suppose that a lot of jobs can be lost. Okay, if this this player enter the game. Okay, writers, okay, producers, and also uh, designers. Okay, can be replaced for the AI. Okay, in your experience. Is something actors, that is happening. Actors, and actors, hosts, voices. Mm -hmm. um, why do I need you if somebody can create a version of you? Um, I'm not an expert in AI. Okay. Um, I know that it's uh, it is a threat in a lot of ways, um, in many many ways. Um, you know, I, I, I watch people, the, the writers that I admire, the producers that made me want to produce films that put that hundreds of hours you'll never know about into the work that they do. And then you can hold up your phone and say, write me a screenplay about this. Um, however, I, I think there is a great awareness. Um, there is, people know, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, computers are not going, going to replace that writer who wrote a book who changed your life. The filmmakers, the producers, the directors 
who made a movie that changed your life. There, in my view, there's no version. Of, they may make it look really good. They make it look really, you know, make it sound real and feel real. And um, but there's a human element to storytelling. And me sitting next to you in the Yucatan cannot be replaced. I'm, there's no green screen. I'm not, I'm really here. And it's very different than if I was talking to you from 10,000 miles away. Yeah, I feel your presence. We have, we've been having great conversations in, in the last few weeks. And so, on the other hand, there are things that AI, um, and again, I, I don't, I'm not an expert. There are things that AI will help people with tremendously uh, that are not part of the creative community. Um, things that I have been trying to learn more about that re relate to healthcare, that relate to um, accessibility of information. Um, so, uh, you know, technology is a speeding train. We're not going to stop it, but we do have to be aware of the fact that, yeah, um, it's a lot cheaper to take one person and turn them into 10,000 actors instead of using 10,000 actors. Uh, but I think storytellers and filmmakers are aware of this, and um, everyone is very, very conscious when they make things about how it could be abused. Okay. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> about the Taylor Swift phenomenon. She made a movie herself about her Eras tour. She produced it, she directed it, she sells it. What's your opinion about that? There's a lot of people normally around a movie, around a film, but now, Taylor Swift, she's changing the game. What a cool thing. Um, I actually uh, uh, mentioned a, uh, a mentor and, and, and one of the, I think, you know, the, the great producers uh, that doesn't really need to be categorized as uh, one category or another is a, a gentleman named Ted Hope. Um, uh, he has done is in the process of doing what I think is an extraordinary thing. Uh, a filmmaker named Vanessa Hope made an ex truly extraordinary film about Taiwan called Invisible Nation. They have been traveling around the world showing the film. And they were not going to allow the film to be something that just kind of ended up somewhere. It's years and years of this, of Vanessa's work and passion and heart. And uh, this is an example of the, the Taylor Swift thing. I had the biggest smile on my face. I mean, let's get people into the theaters. You know, in, in New York, they have one night events where you go see the opera in a theater, or let's say uh, you, you go see a concert uh, that, you know, not everyone can pay to what it costs for a concert ticket, let alone get tickets. So you go to a movie theater and you see a concert for one night, two nights, three nights. I think there is a huge version of that, which Taylor Swift did the most remarkable way and I think there's, it's just the greatest thing. And I think there's an independent version of that, where you say, I worked the last seven years making this documentary. I'm going to figure out how to get people to see it. And it's going to take time. It's going to take letters, communication, email. It's going to take online marketing innovation. But to your point, I think that the model of how a story is told and where it's told and how people get to see it has to be smashed and re-smashed and broken and rebuilt and rebuilt 
Because when you watch someone take a film all around the world that no one would ever see or know about because they don't have a giant corporation behind them, that's inspiring. And I think that's what happened. Invisible Nation is an example, an incredible example of how you can take a film. Taylor Swift is the mega example of how people can go, I want to go see the Taylor Swift. I mean, I wouldn't even try to get tickets. Like, it, you know, uh, I think I have camped out on sidewalks to go see concerts more times in my life than I would like to admit. <laughs> but how great to how great to get people into a movie theater to see a live concert. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, you talk about the cultural impact and how the people uh, will find a way to to get together to see uh, a new movie, okay? In case that cinema is closed, okay, do you think that the technology will evolutionate, okay, to have that uh, sensation in your house? Because we have seen a lot of, for example, the, the 3D television and the Dolby Surround and everything that you can get in your house, and eventually all that technology gets cheaper during time, okay? And did you see a, a small cinema? Can you imagine a small cinemas in, in the future in our houses? Okay? I, not only can I imagine, it's already here. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing: uh, when when I was uh, I was very 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 lucky to work with uh, at a company that was uh, extraordinary filmmaker who had passed away, a legend, Sidney Pollack. Uh, that was the first time I saw, wow, you can have a theater in your living room? Um, the truth is, in apartments in New York, wherever, all over the world, you can hit a button. And I'm not talking about spending tons and tons of money. And a screen comes down, and you can Depending on the size of the room, you can have one person, eight people, 12 people. Um, so that technology is already there. And the quality of the technology, I mean, you could look at it. You don't need, in any apartment, you could look at uh, something beautifully and hear the sound beautifully. And that's one of the things that's great about technology. Um, you know, so, so that exists. People are going to continue to find ways to make their screens bigger, to make uh, the experience. They don't need to leave home. Um, I think that's okay. I think it's great. Uh, uh, you know, to take the time to say, all right, well, I could, you know, somebody spent five years watching this. I, I could watch it on my iPhone, sure. Maybe I'll have a couple friends over and we'll watch it on a screen. Um, uh, I think that's great. I don't think that replaces the experience of strangers getting together in an IMAX theater or in, in any movie theater. Strangers sitting side by side who've never met each other and will probably never see each other again having a communal experience. To me, that's not something that can be replaced. Hey. When? Well, <laughs> but you need streaming to have a home theater, right? We have everything, all the technology, as you said, but you still need streaming, so. Before there was streaming, though, um, DVDs. Before there were DVDs, VHS. though, the first, the first one I saw, the first private theater, in a living room, which is amazing, was a 35 millimeter projector hidden in the wall. So, some of you, I mean, that's a, you know, if you, if you could, I mean, there are people who have 35 millimeter projectors in their homes because, like, what a basic thing to have an actual print of a film. Um, but whatever the format is, and VHS, 
look pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> but you know, 35 millimeter film, streaming, uh, 4K, 8K, a million K. Uh, your your the concept is gonna be let's enhance the experience. And uh, to me, there's there's not a lot of difference between that very first home theater I saw with a 35 millimeter projector and one that you can create for yourself by just going to the store and picking up a, a streaming projector. So you stay with going to the movies uh, I, rather I, than a home theater. What uh, would you choose? Th there should be no choice. There should be Enjoy no, both. There should be, there should be no choice. There, there are, there are, yeah. it, to me, it should never be, like movies for me were never either or. Okay. I don't want, you know, there are things that I want to experience, maybe by myself or maybe quietly, or maybe I want to watch a third or a fourth time to understand how someone did something. And there are things that I want to go to the movie theater and I want to sit with other people and see. So I'm never going to pick this or that. Great. I want all of it. Great. Okay. So uh, in order to, to close uh, all the ideas, okay, how do you see the movies in uh, the future? Okay, In five years, ten years? I guess I would say, for me, I go back to the original idea. Uh, to me, the, the, the greatest records of the history of the world that we have are through storytelling. So whether it was written on a wall, you know, with a piece of chalk, whether it's, you know, gorgeous 70 millimeter movie, wh whether it's a, something streaming that you watch in your headphones on the airplane on a phone, people tell stories. And so I think that the technology will keep evolving, but the, and, and it will be hard, and it will be an adjustment, and some of it will be incredible. You know, think of this. When silent movies ended, an entire generation had no work. I mean, people, what do you, the talkies, when people started to talk in movies, it was the end of something. But look at it, what it was the beginning of. And so before you had, I mean, that was one of the biggest moments in cinema history. You used to go to the theater, people played the piano, there would be titles up, and that's how you experienced the movie. Actors didn't, their voices were not heard. All of a sudden, when the talkies came in, those actors, they didn't really know how to talk for the camera. They knew how to act for the camera in big, different ways. And so, uh, you know, that wasn't the death of cinema. It was a massive change and incredible for many people, hard for some people, but I think for me, the future of cinema is going to be like the future of, of anything, which is that as humans, we find each other through telling stories, and we're never going to stop. Okay. Thank you so much, Ross. Thank you, Ram. Okay. So, uh, when I close this, okay, talking about, I hope never, the cinema's never, never ends, because it was a real, such a real cultural and social experience that, that you were talking about, okay? And we hope that it continues, okay? okay? And you write that, that, that script from in Yucatan that you told me, okay? okay? Because I'm here in the Yucatan for many reasons, but it's, it's a real privilege to be here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So, uh, when I say goodbye in hypothetical speaking, where the... <laughs> Donde lo hubiera, si sí existe. ¿Qué? <laughs>
Imaginemos un universo donde hipotéticamente hablando, un simple cambio ha generado un efecto mariposa, donde las posibilidades son infinitas, donde un mundo muy parecido pero a la vez muy distinto se ha desarrollado y las cosas no son como las conocemos. Vayamos ahí, a ese multiverso.